Hi everyone, my name is Natalie and today I'm going to do a exciting video for me to make. Uh, I did one last year as well. I'm going to do a non-fiction November recommendations video. So basically I will talk through a few non-fiction titles that I would recommend that also fit this year's non-fiction November prompts. Uh, so if you don't know what non-fiction November is, it is a month-long uh, reading challenge or reading event uh, on booktube where you are encouraged to read nonfiction. So there are always a few prompts, they are usually just single words uh, that you are um, that you can use as a way to sort of inspire you to choose books for your TBR. But it is not at all uh, an obligation. Um, you can use them however you want and interpret them uh, however you want. Nonfiction member is hosted by a book olive and I will link her announcement video below so you get all of the information you need uh, if you are interested. Uh, but yeah, as I said, I will be uh, recommending books for each of the prompts this year. Uh, so without further ado, let's go through the book recommendations. So the first prompt is sports, and I'm not actually going to go into that here because I've done a full video talking about sports nonfiction, so I will link that in the cards and below. Uh, and the next prompt is voice. So the first book that I wanted to recommend for this prompt is Gone, A Girl, A Violent and Life Undone by Min Kum, and this is a memoir of the author becoming a professional violinist. It uh, talks about all of her training, how she became interested in the violin in the first place, what it meant to her, all of the various uh, challenges that came along the journey. And the reason I think of this book particularly fitting for this prompt is in part that it is a memoir, and a memoir of course has this very personal voice through it. It tries to capture one single individual's voice as well as often uh, sort of reflecting other people's experiences as well. Uh, but th there's also the fact that vi the violin, to me, is the, music is the musical instrument that most strongly um, reminds me of a human voice. It's almost like a wailing at times and like a human song. Um, it has a kind of depth to the sound that, for me anyway, very much reminds me of uh, a voice. So in general, I think this prompt would really work with any books on music. The next book recommendation I wanted to make for voice is Waterfalls of Stars by Roseanne Alexander, My 10 Years on the Island of Skoma. And this is a memoir of an author living on an island for 10 years as a warden. She talks about um, their life and um, sort of the way that their life changes in living in this very isolated location with a very strong connection to the natural world. The reason I think of this as voice is because for me this is in part uh, Roseanne Alexander's memoir but also in part sort of a biography of Skoma as a place. Uh, Skoma feels alive in this book. Uh, it feels like uh, she captures every single living thing in this island. All of the fauna and flora of this uh, island, all of its various temperaments in terms of weather, um, all of the various things that makes this location and this place so unique. Uh, so I think uh, in terms of that it's sort of a uh, the voice of a particular place and uh, a place as magical and captivating as Goma. And the last book that I wanted to recommend for voice is The Collective Schizophrenia by Esme Wei and Wang, which is an essay collection about the author's experiences of schizophrenia. So uh, this uh, talks through things like diagnoses, uh, with uh, education and having a family with schizophrenia, with various other uh, things related to the experience. The reason I think of this as a good uh, pick for voice is because it sort of gives voice to a mental illness that is so fraught with misconceptions and stereotypes. Um, that is something that she also discusses, the fact that uh, schizophrenia is uh, thought of and perceived by a lot of people um, as something very different from what it actually is. I would strongly recommend this to everyone. I think this is the kind of book that, as I said, gives voice to um, a mental illness that is so misunderstood and I think we could all use um, 
to learn more uh, of this perspective and a voice that is definitely um, worth listening to. The next prompt is True, and my first recommendation for True is Time Song, a Sur Searching for Doggerland by Julia Blackburn. And this is uh, one of the books that made it to the Wayne Wright shortlist this year. It is basically Julia Blackburn's um, attempt at creating a history of Doggerland. So Doggerland was the place, uh, the space of land uh, that connected the UK to the rest of Europe way back in time. And so she is looking for fragments and other remains um, of this location in this place uh, and tries to read them and create sort of a narrative or uh, create a portrait of this place uh, that has been a little bit lost in history. Um, so the reason I think of this as uh, fitting for the prompt true is because at at, at its heart, it is a search for truth, a search for the true meaning of the fragments, a search for uh, understanding of a place that has been um, that has been unknown for a long time. She doesn't necessarily come to strong conclusions because there's so few fragments and so little information. Uh, it is more about the search for truth than the actual finding of truth. The next book I wanted to recommend for True is I Am, I Am, I Am, uh, 17 Brushes with Death by Maggie O'Farrell. This is another me memoir and it is looking specifically at Maggie O'Farrell's various near-death experiences. There is uh, near-death experiences related to conflict with other people, uh, with crime, with uh, health and birth, various kinds of things. Uh, it is a very emotional and hard-hitting memoir, I think. And the reason I think of this as fitting for the prompt is because this is a good example of um, truth is sometimes stranger than fiction, in that it feels impossible that one person has experienced so many um, things uh, that has brought her to the brink. The last one I have for true is I'm telling the truth but I'm lying by Bassie Ickby. So this is a, it's sold as an essay collection but is really more like a memoir and this one is about the author's experiences of bipolar 2 disorder. Um, so obviously the title itself includes the word truth in it. This book comes back and again and again to the idea of truth. One aspect of it is memory in terms of her own own memories of her childhood, of uh, things when she's had um, very bad mental health um, and that those memories are often very muddled. And then there's um, the truth in terms of the stories she's heard and been told uh, and she's trying to sort out what is true and what isn't. Uh, so uh, this book is very much surrounding this topic, uh, so it would be a great one uh, to pick up for the prompt. The last prompt is design, and the first one I wanted to recommend is The Foxes Unearthed by Lucy Jones, uh, which is a very meaningful, meaningful book for me because I uh, see this book as the book that got me into nonfiction. Uh, so this is a, a nonfiction book about foxes, specifically in Britain, and sort of the complicated relationship that the British have with the fox as an animal. The fox in mythology and in literature, in art, uh, talks about fox hunting and misconceptions, um, animal activism, all kinds of things. The reason I wanted to recommend this for design is mo mainly because of its cover. It is one of my favorite uh, book cover designs for nonfiction, so I wanted to recommend this one. Let's see who has designed it. Cover illustration by Nathan Burton. Love it. The next one I wanted to recommend for design is Word by Word, The Secret Life of Dictionaries by Corey Stomper. This is a memoir written by an author who works for Merriam-Webster. Uh, so she talks about the creation of a dictionary, specifically Merriam-Webster, from her own um, professional experience. Uh, a word definition, uh, example sentences, and all of those things, uh, what kind of words are included in a dictionary, what the purpose of a dictionary is, everything to do with the design of a dictionary this sort of covers. So it's a perfect book to pick up if you are at all interested in linguistics or the English language. It is very descriptive, so keep that in mind, uh, but I found it very interesting and there were a lot of things that I didn't know. And the last book that I wanted to recommend in this video and the last one for design 
design is Walt Disney, The Triumph of the American Imagination by Neil Gabler, and this is a biography of Walt Disney, as you probably could, um, could guess. Because of his influence in animation design and how, how animation even became such a big thing, I think this is an apt book for our reading for this prompt, but in general it is a fantastic book uh, and I want to recommend it strongly, even if you're not the biggest fan of Walt Disney. I think it is interesting both in terms of animation history, in terms of uh, movie history, but also just in terms of like American identity and um, in business as well, because he was definitely a strong business uh, businessman. So those are all of the books that I want to talk about in this video. Let me know if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them or if you're planning to pick any of them up. I hope you're having a fantastic start to your nonfiction November and I will talk to you soon. Bye!